Consider the following languages L1 equal to set of all M such that M takes at least 2016 steps on some input. L2 equal to set of all M such that M takes at least 2016 steps on all inputs. L3 equal to set of all M such that M accepts epsilon. Where for each Turing machine M, the encoding M denotes a specific encoding of M. Which of the following is true? And four options have been given regarding whether these languages are recursive or not. So this is a question coming from theory of computation from the topic recursive languages and Turing machines. Now in order to answer this question we need to have very good concepts about Turing machine, recursive languages etc. So we will go through these languages given here one by one and find out which of these are recursive. First of all let us take the language L1. Now L1 is the set of all Turing machines which take at least 2016 steps on some input. So the set of all Turing machine is an uncountable, is a countable infinite set. Okay. So given an encoding of a Turing machine, if we can find out whether M belongs to the language L1 or not, then we can say that L1 is recursive. So I'll repeat that for any encoding of a Turing machine given or basically any Turing machine given to us, if we can say whether that Turing machine belongs to this language or not, then we can say that this language is recursive because in a decidable way we are finding out whether that belongs to this language or not. Now, let us say we have been given this Turing machine M. Now I am designing a new Turing machine here which will check whether M belongs to L1. So if the, that Turing machine is a decidable one, that, that means it can it will halt for every input and find out that whether that Turing machine belongs to L1, then the language L1 is recursive okay so what our new Turing machine will do is it will take the input encoding M take the Turing machine of that that is it takes the Turing machine M and then to that we will input all the strings of length less than or equal to 2016 and run it for a maximum of 2016 steps that is to this Turing machine M given to us we will be inputting all the strings of length less than or equal to 2016 and run it for a maximum of 2016 steps. We are restricting this Turing machine to run only maximum 2016 steps. Okay. So string all strings of length less than or equal to 2016 is a finite set. Let us say if the alphabet is let us say A, B, C, then the strings of length 0 will be epsilon, strings of length 1 will be A, B, C, strings of length 2 will be A, B, A, C, B, A, B, C, C, A, C, B, etc. So all strings of length less than or equal to 2016 is a finite set. Okay. And for each of that finite number of strings, we are running the Turing machine for a maximum of 2016 steps only. Now, there can be two cases. Case one is that for some input, it ran for 2016 steps. It reached 2016 steps. When it reaches 2016 steps, we are stopping the procedure, right? So, for some input, it reached 2016 steps. What does it mean? It means that for some input this Turing machine is running for 2016 steps. What it means is for at least some input this Turing machine is running, is taking 2016 steps for some input. Which means that this machine, Turing machine will belong to the language L1 and belongs to L1. Now case 2 is for all the inputs it halted before 2016 steps. That is for all the input it didn't reach till 2016 step. Now in case 1 if it reached 2016 step it doesn't mean that the Turing machine halted at, two th halted at that 2016 step. No it doesn't mean that we were restricting the Turing machine for till 2016 steps. So once it reaches 2016 we can say for sure that this Turing machine is running for at least 2016 steps. Now case 2 is that for all the inputs it halted before 2016 steps. Which implies that for all the strings of length less than or equal to 2016, it will halt before 2016 steps. Now that will also mean one more important thing that is for all the strings of length greater than 2016 also, it will halt before 2016 steps. Why that is so is all strings having great length greater than or equal to 2016, for reading that string itself we will need at least 2016 steps, correct? Now, all strings of having length greater than or equal to 2016, it will have a prefix of length less than or equal to 2016, right? Now for that prefix only we were testing here and for that prefix part only we are seeing that it is halting before 2016 steps. So we can say that for the strings of length greater than 2016 also this Turing machine 
will halt before 2016 steps which implies m does not belong to l1 so clearly i got two cases only for the new turing machine we decide we designed we'll take the input turing machine and we are running this on the turing machine and there are only two cases either that turing machine will belong to l1 or the turing machine will not belong to l1 we will output that and our new turing machine decided it is not going into any infinite loop state for every turing machine we can easily decide whether that belongs to l1 which means that the language l1 is recursive yeah. now let's look at the language l2 for this also we'll be doing the same procedure as we did for l1 with a small variation so for l2 we are trying to find out whether l2 is recursive right so for given it encoding of a turing machine m just like we did previously we need to find out if m belongs to the language l2 so what we'll do is again we are designing a new turing machine what that will do is it will take the turing machine m which was the input and to this Turing machine, it will input all strings of length less than or equal 2016 and run it for a maximum of 2016 steps. Again, just like the previous case. Now here there are two cases. One is for some input, it halted before 2016 steps. Okay. Now if for some input it is halting before 2016 steps, then clearly it doesn't belong to L2. L2 is the set of all Turing machine that takes at least 2016 steps on all inputs so if it is halting before 2016 steps clearly that turing machine m won't belong to the language l2 it was l2 sorry now case 2 is for all the inputs it ran for 2016 steps now if for all input it is running for 2016 steps for all strings of length less than or equal 2016 we can say that for strings of length greater than 2016 also it will run for at least 2016 steps that is because all the strings of having length greater than 2016 the prefix part only is what we have we have done here that is all strings of length less than or equal 2016 now for the prefix part itself it is taking at least 2016 steps so for all strings of length greater than 2016 reading that prefix part alone will take 2016 steps so we can say that for strings greater than length greater than 2016 also it will be taking at least 2016 steps which implies m belongs to the language l2 so it was just opposite of the previous case right so clearly there are only two cases for any input turing machine m we can decide whether it belongs to the language l2 or not using the turing machine which we decided now which we designed now so l2 is a recursive language because for any input we can decide whether that belongs to this language l2 so l1 and l2 are recursive here now looking at L3, it says that the set of all Turing machine which accepts the language Epsilon. So here it is basically the set of all Turing machine that accepts the language Epsilon meaning for any Turing machine given we need to find out whether Epsilon belongs to that Turing, Epsilon belongs to that language or not. Now this is not decidable that's because for given a Turing machine and if you are inputting Epsilon to that Turing machine, that Turing machine may run for an infinite amount of time we can't say whether it will run for an infinite amount of time or not it can run for an infinite amount of time it can go into a loop so for epsilon given a turing machine we can't say whether that turing machine will accept epsilon or not so this language is not recursive actually so looking at options only l1 and l2 are recursive so that is l1 l2 are recursive and l3 is not recursive option c